<coughs> okay. Hi, Robin. I hope you are feeling better. It's going to be quite a time gap between our last and our next lesson. So I just want to put together a quick video addressing our cylinders once again and then showing you one other somewhat new or old exercise um, just so you have more of a variety in your practice until we, we meet again. Um, okay, let's let's start with the cylinders. I also want to make my um, my notes more clear so I can share uh, with you uh, them as well. So as last time, I, I think you were right. It's going to be much more easier for you to um, remember our lessons when you can see my notes. The idea of doing lessons. Um, so last time we've done my little exercise with the coin flip. I've seen your work. It's great. I'm really happy to see how uh, well you did. So let's start with this exercise and then build on it because it's obviously something that you are already quite good at. So, let's say this is going to be our eye level. And the last time we have agreed that when we look at the coin edge on our, like, straight dead head on our eye level, we would see only its edge just like this. And then when we start moving coin up, we would start to see um, a little bit of a bottom plane. And more or like higher. We move the coin more of that bottom plane we can see. I would also like to, as I do, um, I want to make the, the edge of the coin that's closer to us a bit darker and the one that's further away from us slightly lighter just so we can it's easier for us to orient in the space our eye uh, can easily understand that um, edges or objects that are closer to us are usually more saturated more with higher contrast so um we can use the knowledge easily to communicate that, okay, this edge is the one that's closer to us, and this edge is the further away. Okay, this is the part of the flip that's with the coin going above our eye level. Let's add a few coins that are below. Once again, I want to make the edge that's further away slightly lighter and the edge that's closer a bit darker. With each coin should be a little bit more and more spherical as we travel down. The 
This is Karaita Jam, actually. She is slightly... Probably more like something like this. And one more. Okay. Let's have a look. Nice. So this would be our coins as we move them up and down or above and below our eye level. Uh, we can see the bottom side. And if we move the coin above and the top side once we move it below our, our eye level. Now, we can take down opacity of this layer and create new one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually keep this, the, my brush color. So we can pick any two coins that we can see. Mm, let's start with this one and this one. We can trace them on a new um, layer. Oops. And then connect them. We already uh, we started the exercise with the two rollers, so we're just basically just gonna trace them. Now, if we switch off the first layer. You can see we basically just there in the cylinder. We can make this side of the plane maybe less dramatic or less bold because at the side that we would not be able to see. And voila, we have our very basic. Um, cylinder. And we can do this with any two uh, coins. Basically, you can imagine it as one cube or a really long um, paper, uh, toilet paper roll a cucumber or banana or whatever. And you can this uh decide on two places where you want to cut it. Maybe you we can even cut it above and below. Or maybe this one. And once again, just trace the, um, the ellipses we, or the coins. I'm going to make the, the furthest uh, half of the coin the dash line, because that would be the one that we can't see. And then we just connect them. And once we switch off the lower mm, layer, you can see we basically just do um, another cylinder. This is this one we can't see. Uh, top, or neither top or bottom plane, because 
And if you remember, we picked the, um, well, our eye level is somewhere over here. So we are not really able to see the top or bottom. But we can see that the, we would see the curve of the top and that curve of the bottom. Um, as I mentioned with uh, the the cutting, like if you imagine, let's say it's like the huge uh, um, toilet uh, toilet roll, toilet toilet paper roll. That's how you call it. Depending where you would cut it. That's how the um, distort the the plane, the bar button plane. You it, we would see. So that also means that we can. Okay, let me. Let's uh, pick another. Let's pick these two ellipses. This is the top plane, and bottom plane. Okay. Uh, let me just. Uh, I just remember I wanted to um, emphasize something. Last time. We've done a bit of the constructions and we do, uh, do the cylinder inside of uh, the prism, and it was all set in a, a perspective. Our main point of it, or like takeaway from the last dead exercise, and also this one should be the, the plane that's further from our eye level gonna be more closer to this perfect circle and the one that's closer to our eye level gonna be more disturbed or more squished um also coming back to our Really tall toilet paper roll. Depending on where we would cut it, the that how the mm, how disturbed the, the that plane or that uh, uh, cut would be. We can use that knowledge, like. Okay, let's say we would not really cut it, but we would put like the rubber band on it in different places. And it would create these uh, contours. As if the rubber band we would put here, we would wrap around the, the edge of uh, the cylinder. Well, wait, I actually wanted to draw them in different color. Let's pick this one. This, this, this. Now, what if I switch off the hello? We have the cylinder and this uh, turquoise uh, rubber band on the lines that are wrapping around the firm air contours. And I probably didn't pick the best color. Let's see if we go with this one. Con colors. And 
the So we can basically uh, take any two ellipses and as far as they are um, parallel, and it means that the axis on the top of one uh, ellipse and the axis at the two second ellipse, they are parallels. We can connect them. Okay, it's a little bit skewed. Well, anyway, and basically create um, cylinders that would well, uh, face any di direction we want. And keeping in mind that we want the, the plane that's further from our eye level. We want to uh, disturb that one slightly less, or like make it less chubbier. Well, make it more chubbier. The one that's closer is more squished. And then when we, uh, that's how we can, uh, there are uh, cylinders Basically, in any mm, any angle, usually I haven't done them yet. We can also play with the cylinders that are um, more. Well, they are less distorted. It means that the upper and the bottom plane would be more spherical. Just like that. Maybe they can actually overlap. And it would be Perhaps a uh, cylinder that we are looking almost directly on the top plane. Mm. We... Okay. This would be like the, if you feel like uh, there are some uh, cylinders and maybe like you don't want to do so much construction, so this would be the exercise to go for just to uh there are two parallel ellipses try to make one kind of bit more squish the other one more round and then collecting connecting them and this part is the one that we can already see and then uh other steps, step in the exercise would be adding the contour, at least one. These these shapes are fairly simple, which means that we can we don't really, we do not really need uh, so many uh, contours to uh, communicate its shapes. It's going to be a bit more different once we start doing more organic uh, forms. Maybe next time. Then we will need more contours to show how the forms change, changes. But for now, I would say one contour per cylinder is just fine. Also, the roundness of uh, that contour should be somewhere between this and this. This should be really shallow. 
This should be a re uh, deeper, and this should be somewhere in between to show the regression of our coin, uh, coin flip. So, that would be our cylinders. Let's save. Now let's uh, go to the our next exercise. It's going to be a bit more similar to the one we already did, and you done quite a lot of them by, on your own. And I would like to revisit that exercise and basically use what we have just, what we have already learned. Um, in exercise, in this exercise, our main objective of the this exercise or the question we want to answer would be mm, to understand the basic form structure of a human body and more specifically we want to know if the body part that we are looking at is facing uh, well we are looking at it from the top or from the bottom or straight ahead um, where are we yeah it should be question there mm. Up, down, or straight at the body part or the body part. And we're gonna use two techni techniques. Mm. Number one, gonna be the V gonna make looks like structures just uh like you did and this book like structure is gonna represent either um rape cage pelvis and maybe head, and uh, maybe we can use kind of different shape, because as you mentioned, um, maybe it should be skull. I will use two to both structures. Well, you last time you mentioned that it's quite tricky to the box around head, so maybe we can use more like sp sphere in some planes. We will see. Oh, I will show you what I mean. That's probably the better way to go around. And the second technique we're gonna use is are the cylinders. Um, we're gonna we're gonna use cylinders with contours and X. This is probably not cylinders with contours for uh, limbs. So when we, I found, I picked this uh, picture from the Pinterest. You, you can choose. Uh, well, I will share the picture with you with the video. You are free to explore and pick your own poses that you like or that uh, you find interesting. Um, now let's start with the first one. Let's start with the boxes. Um, I'm going to st start with, I'm going to try to find the um, box that would represent her rib cage. I know, by looking at her, 
I can already see that we can somewhat uh, see the top, like we are looking on the top part of her hip cage over here, so we would be able to see the top part of the box. It would be probably somewhat like this. Mm, maybe more. Oh. You can see that over here, her rape cage is kind of pushing out of her silhouette. So I know this is going to be like one uh, edge of my box. This corner over here on her rape cage, like you can, you can probably see like her rape cage doing this over here. Right over here should be like would be like the corner of when or the part where the rape cage starts to turn and form the front plane of her chest. So here would be the ah, I feel like I'm tilting it a little bit too much actually. I would say like this would be more accurate representation of my box. I'm not gonna go to join it actually. Yeah. And here would be like I would say like we can kind of see or feel her rape cage or the back part or cor back corner of her rape cage over here. This part over here, this is the mass, see, like her light, light flat muscle, like her back muscle. So, so like this would be her, would be her. A box that can represent her rape cage, and I'm also well. I will, I will come back to the rape cage. Let's let's go for the pelvis. You know, let's see, like her pelvic bone kind of sticking out over here. We actually can use the uh, her uh, pants line or leggings line. It can be quite helpful, so we can use uh, edge of her trousers or leg leggings as one edge of the of the box. Over here would be the other one, and Maybe her bones is actually a little bit lower over here. Like this and the... If I would want to do a box, I would... I think it would go like something, something like this. I'm gonna continue to make or shape it more like a pelvis. I'm gonna add the triangle down here. Or maybe I can leave it there like that. Okay. That works as well. Maybe I can, I feel like it, maybe I can take this edge more Yeah, this, this makes a little bit more sense to me, <laughs> at least. So, oh, and the head. Let's use like the circle or the sphere for her, her head. And we're gonna just, just so we know which way her head is oriented. 
Mm -hmm. I think you like this. We're gonna um, suggest a side plane of a head will be over here. Is usually her cheekbone is a really good orientation point, and also let's. Well, I want it to come back, but we'll go from here. We can also use a couple of axes, just so it's more obvious to us how the structures are oriented. Or maybe to be clear, clearer where, from what point, like on from what angle we are looking at them. So her middle line of her face to go like somewhere will be somewhere here i can do the rest of her head like so and her eye line uh angles this way and her mm, chest bone or like the the middle of her rib cage is somewhere over here, and the middle of her belly or her pelvis to go from here. So now when you, so we would uh, use if we would create new layer and there on the on that layer the actual body as we want to there it. It would be more clearer for us um, which which way are the body parts facing, and also it would be much more easier to for us to maintain perspective because when you as you can see, we draw these like the axis or middle lines, and usually, well, usually if we draw it well. The half of the body that's further away should be smaller than the part of the body, this would be the one that's further away, than the part of the body that's closer to us. And then the same thing goes for her uh, chest. And this should be, well, it obviously is much more smaller in this half that's closer to us even though it should be half to half but because this part or this side is further away it's gonna be we're gonna see it smaller and the same goes for the pelvis and for the limbs um let's Simplify each limb to two cylinders. We can just, we're gonna skip joints. We're gonna imagine that she has um, hairband or like a scrunchie or maybe a line there around her, her arm. And we want to know if it would uh, go like this, or if she would have mm, sleeves, if they would wrap around her arm like this, or if they would wrap around like this. And looking, hmm. Like because we are kind of somewhat uh, seeing the top of her rib cage, the top of her shoulders. I think that we are looking down at her arms. We're gonna there are two contours for her upper arm. So like yeah, upper arm. 
and then just connect them. Okay, we are going to uh, avoid the joints for now. And then let's say it should have. Okay, yeah, there would be maybe more distorted joints. And then if we do the same for the fur arm. Maybe might be like this. Actually, I'm gonna avoid the joint area of her waist, so I'm gonna end over here. And hmm, let's do the same for the other arm. I feel well. The, uh, this pair, the arm, is slightly easier because it's obviously facing us. And her upper arm... Hmm, I feel like it's slightly facing us as well. Maybe we can do with this orientation. And then we can maybe the same passes with her legs. I'm gonna avoid the joint area. It likes usually because we tend to look, take photos or like look at the people eye to eye we tend to look down to their legs we can also use her leggings again as a contour the same goes with the other hand uh, other leg And now if I measure the um the layer with the picture, we can see the figure like basically the mannequin of a figure and with uh more as we as we go along with uh, more um, difficult or more complex um first we will uh, be able to use this mannequin to their basically her the other illustrations of her or perfect picture or whatever we will look for or maybe just the really cartoonish picture or stylized well um i hope I recorded that. I hope my audio was recorded as well. I hope it somewhat made sense because I'm um, slightly more nervous because I'm recording myself. Um, and yeah. And I hope to see you after I came back from my traveling. If you have 
any questions, um, feel free to write, to shoot me a message on Discord. I will share the video and the notes with you there. And as always, I'm wishing you all the best. <laughs>